This is part one of a two part series. I'm really excited about this project. Let me show you what I've done. We'll get right into uh, what I'm gonna be working on. So a lot of this started with the wheels and brakes as I just started uh, going through the landing gear on this airplane. I knew right away that I had to address the, uh, the brake system. So I started kind of from the ground up, tires, wheels, bearings, brakes, all that stuff. Really important on these airplanes. No need to skimp, no need to cut corners, just doing it right from the ground up. Obviously I went through and did the tires, wheels. You saw that I think in a, in a different video. Put the right brake calipers on, saw that in another video. Now I went through, I made all new brake lines that go from the caliper all the way up. The old brake lines were, uh, they worked, but they were just you know, really bad, ugly bends and they were hard lines all the way to the caliper. So one of the big benefits of having this flex line on here instead of the hard line is that if I need to replace the brake pads on the caliper, I don't need to completely drain all the fluid from the brake system like you would with the hard line. Uh, I can I can just take the caliper out of the way and, and move it and service it as necessary. Also, with the uh, brake calipers installed on the front, uh, the book actually has a drawing with flex lines installed. It just makes sense uh, in a lot of ways, and, and that's what I did. I made new uh, new lines, and and I think it came out pretty good. Now that we're done with the outside and all the brake components uh, externally, it's time to make sure everything on the inside is equally overhauled and up to spec. I've already gone and overhauled the front. Now I'm gonna go and do the rear master cylinders. And that's what we're gonna do in this video right here. This is a Scott 4408. This is an E model, which is uh, what you'll find on bird dogs. There are other variants out there used on Stinson's and other Cessna, I think 120s, 140s have them as well. But this is the E model. The only difference really is this, this top plate. Let me show you. There's three seals that need to be replaced inside the Scott 4408 series master cylinders. There's one right here, they call it a cup. There's one right here on the bottom of the reservoir. And then there's one up inside this cap right here uh, that slides up and down on the shaft. We're gonna go take it apart on the bird dog and I'm gonna show you all the inner workings. First things first, make sure that there's no fluid in the system. In this case, everything's already been drained. I don't have to worry about any fluid leaking. What you're gonna do is unscrew the reservoir. It threads into this top piece. It might be a little sticky because it's been sitting for years, but once it unscrews, you should be able to slide down this reservoir cup and expose four set screws with lock nuts all the way around on this top piece. You are gonna to need to detach the pedal from the master cylinder. And the next step before you can remove the shaft is you're gonna to need to loosen all of the jam nuts that lock the Allen screws in place. Best accomplished with a, a small ignition sized 5 16th wrench. If you use a full size, it's gonna be a little difficult uh, when you're working behind the pedals. In this case, I'm working on the rear pedals, which I have very easy access, but in general, uh, a couple of them are gonna be a little tricky to get to. Once you've got all the jam nuts loose, you can just take a small Allen wrench and loosen all the set screws that go all the way around. Once the four set screws are loose, this top piece will slide off and you'll be able to remove the entire center shaft of the brake master cylinder. And then finally, you just slide the reservoir cup up off the shaft and we can go replace the O-ring on the bench. You can see the O-ring right in there. Again, this has already been cleaned and serviced, so this is just for demonstration purposes. This one I'm showing you in my hand, I've already replaced the seals, but the reason that I removed it again is there's a spring washer in there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's worn out. And at first I didn't think I was gonna replace it, but uh, let me show you why we are gonna replace it today. So at first, when I rebuilt the rear master cylinder that I just showed you how I, how I took it apart, I started asking around about this, the spring washer. And mostly the answer I got from several reputable sources was if it looks okay, then it's probably fine, put it back together. There was a caveat to that. There is a guy out there 
that has a bird dog, had an accident, something to the effect of landing the aircraft, one of the brakes locked up. Obviously that's not a good situation, especially on a tail airplane. Airplane flipped over, airplane was damaged. Luckily the pilot was okay. There was an investigation. Investigating mechanic as well as the NTSB both discovered broken spring washer in the master cylinder. While that was the only instance that I had heard of that firsthand, uh, it was cause for alarm enough for me to investigate further and start looking at this spring washer situation. What I did is started looking real closely at this, the way this works. Let me show you what I found. So when this is all put together, this shaft, or this shaft right here with this cup, which you can see is almost like a little skirt. It's got a, a kind of an angle on it. It gets inserted into this shaft here. And that spring washer goes between that nut and that assembly that has the washer on it. Now the washer in this one, even though it's intact, uh, you can kind of see it there at an angle. It's worn, but it still has a spring effect. And what I think this does, and the best information that I could find, is that after you release pressure from the brakes, that spring washer just takes a little bit of pressure off of the brake system to release the caliper. Now, if that spring washer wasn't there, or even worse, if it was broken into pieces and uh, somehow this little cup seal got jammed, it could potentially create the caliper or the brake to freeze or lock up in a certain position. So it kind of acts like a return spring. And I know different brake systems have return springs. Now there is a big main return spring inside of the shaft and that's it right there now i could be wrong but my best information tells me or leads me to believe that that little spring washer or sprint washer as it's called in the book is just a added measure to release any leftover pressure on the brake caliper so that the pads or brake linings don't stay engaged and rub on the rotors or the brake discs. Now this is where things go downhill a little. Rebuilding a master cylinder by itself is not complicated, but there's only several parts really involved. The seals are readily available through air repair. Three seal kit was like 30 something dollars, which is uh, kind of ridiculous like everything these days, but nonetheless, the seals are available. The spring washers, however, I was able to find some also through air repair but I think I bought the last five in existence. Unless you, you know of some anywhere else, I was able to get some, but they are hard to find. Very hard to find, nearly impossible. To the point that I was actually considering and looking into having a batch manufactured. So that's a different conversation, but nonetheless, I do have some enough to rebuild my master cylinder. These are them right here. These are original from Scott Aviation. I think the date on there is six, so that's June. 54. June 1954. Uh, Scott Aviation. Obviously, they're not around anymore. So they had five. I bought five. I had four master cylinders anyway. So I, I figured the only real things inside of the master cylinders are the seals and that spring. Now, to, to buy a new one of these master cylinders, they are available through, uh, I think Univer has them, but they're like over $1,200 each. Yes, over $1,200 each per master cylinder. That is ridiculous. Uh, when, when effectively you can rebuild it and make it as good as new for pennies on the dollar when you're talking about those kind of prices. Uh, it's not worth messing around with brakes on any tailwheel airplane or most airplanes in general. Um, um, it's, just, it's just cheap insurance overall, big picture stuff. So I'm going through, I'm replacing all the seals and all the spring washers. It's something I highly recommend looking at on yours as well if you haven't already. I'm only replacing the spring washer because I've already done the seals and I'm just doing this as a demonstration to show you. We're gonna go through the entire process on the next brake master cylinder. So this is just the spring washer that I'm gonna take off. So here's the old one versus the new one. 
As you can see, the new one definitely has more shape to it, quite a bit of curve, whereas the old one is uh, pretty flattened out. Now in this case, there's no deformities on the old one. I did remove one that had holes in it and corrosion and pitting, and it was only a matter of time before it looked like, like that. And there's the broken one, just to give you an idea what I removed from my front left master cylinder. Here's the new spring washer installed and you can see it's got good tension. This should be good for quite a while. All right, so now that this one is done, I'm gonna take you through the whole process, start to finish on this other master cylinder. The only thing I've done is disconnect the pedal. Okay, so that was just an initial wipe down. This thing's obviously been leaking a long time. Still have some more cleaning to do. You could tell that at some point, somebody put O-rings on the fill port, which those O-rings don't belong there. They're not in any of the drawings. That doesn't even need to seal that well. You could tell there's a vent hole there anyway. So the problem in this case was you can see the residue around the shaft that seal was leaking and we're gonna replace that. We're gonna replace the cup right here. We're gonna replace the spring washer. It's still springing. It's pretty soft compared to the new springs that I have. But we're gonna replace that O-ring as well. The first thing we need to do is remove this clevis so that we can slide this top piece off. So with a 5 16th wrench right on there and then we're gonna try to spin this clevis. Set that aside. Now we can slide this off and you can see one of the O-rings is inside there. Put this aside for now and we're just going to work on the shaft. This sleeve comes off, put that aside. And now we need to go over to a bench vise so that we can take this nut off, replace the seal and the spring. This is an aluminum nut. It's just kind of uh, swaged or pinched on there. It doesn't really need to be crushed too tight, just enough so that this doesn't spin off on its own. In order to remove it, I'm gonna pinch it in the opposite direction a little bit, and then I'm gonna thread it off. So using this bench vise with aluminum soft jaws, I'm gonna set up that nut perpendicular to the direction that it's currently pinched. Squeeze there, I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees. It doesn't take a whole lot. Just enough to kind of take the, uh, the pinch off it. And I'm gonna turn it around on the vise. Once you've managed to get that nut loose, just go ahead and remove it. It's really important you don't want to damage that shaft. It does have two flats on it in case you need to hold it. There's your spring washer, the washer below that. Those will come off. And then here's the, uh, the cup seal. And then all you've got left is your shaft now. There's the cup seal. Part of the flat washer came out. I gotta get the rest out of that. There's the O-ring. It's the new cup seal. It's got a little bit of hydraulic fluid on it. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the stack up back together. So this is the main shaft. That goes on there, gets a washer. Then the new spring washer goes on there. Face down like that. And then the nut goes on top of that. It goes down to right about a 16th of an inch. 
and that's where you get that springiness. See that right there? Now I need to pinch this nut in the vise so that it doesn't come off. All right, so that's done. The nut's crimped back on, spring washer's set, sleeve goes back on with the port facing down. Goes back on there. Okay, so this has all been overhauled. New O-ring there, new cup washer, new O-ring in there, new spring washer. Slide the reservoir cup onto the shaft. This is kind of the tricky part, trying to fit this new cup washer, which is kind of flared out. So you want to tuck it into the uh, into the shaft and make sure that none of the edges are pinched or hanging out. So you kind of have to go around and push it in. There we go. Once it goes in, is push this all the way down. Make sure all your set screws are out, not interfering. There we go. And now you want to set the angle or where this top piece is going to stay. So I'm going to put it so that the fill port is all the way on the bottom and the vent port is all the way on the top. So when the airplane's sitting on the ground, nose up, the vent's gonna be on the top. And in level attitude, it won't matter as much, but that's how I want it. Okay, all four set screws are snug. Now I just need to go tighten down the, the jam nuts, which are just kind of a safety so that the set screws don't come loose. And that's about it. That was a lot of work to do four master cylinders. Well worth it in the end. Only thing I have left to do is bleed the system, which in itself, it's a separate video. So I'm gonna post a link right here. Click on that right there if you wanna see the brake bleeding process. Hey, thanks for watching guys, I appreciate you. Make sure you uh, check out some of the other videos. Let me know if you like this stuff by clicking on the little like button. And uh, as always, helps the channel out if you share this stuff or subscribe to the channel. Again, cost nothing. All it does is give you notifications, which you could probably turn off if you don't want them. And uh, it really helps out the channel. So thanks guys, we'll see you on the next one.